Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Ski or Die, brought to us by Electronic Arts and Ultra. Like Skate or Die, Ski or Die consists of five different mini-games that you can play in any order you want to in a practice-like mode, or you can do a full-blown competition competing in every event with up to five friends. Of course, the goal for each of the event is to see how much of a score you can possibly rack up, and each event has a different scoring system with different objectives. So here we go with Ski or Die for the Nintendo Entertainment System. When you start the game, you'll see the amazingly radical snowboarder upside down with the Ski or Die logo. And once you press start here, you'll be inside of Rodney's Ski Shop. Rodney returns from the original Skate or Die game, and here, just like before, you'll move around the Ski or Die logo, highlighting different areas of the shop and Rodney for some different phrases, as well as you can check out the high scores or go to the player name list and enter your name, as well as those who also will be competing. Since I'll be playing a single player, I'll be just entering my name into the first slot here. Once you've done so, you'll back out of this menu, and then you can either go to compete or go to practice. We're going to go to compete, and then you can move around here, selecting each individual event that you would like, or go to the upper left corner to complete all events. And the first event we'll be doing is the snowboarding halfpipe. Now, in this event, you'll be moving back and forth in the giant halfpipe itself. You'll have a speed meter in the top center, with the total time you have left at the top. The event lasts for two minutes, and your goal, of course, is to score as many points as possible during these two minutes. When moving back and forth, you want to keep your speed up, avoiding the rocks in the middle of the area, while also picking up some of the other random objects to give you a little bit of bonus score. As far as tricks go, though, when you're moving back and forth, you'll hold in the A button in different directions in order to do different moves. You'll want to hold the direction and the A button a second or so right before you end up going up into the air, not after you're already in the air, as it won't end up working. Now, there are a few different tricks that are pulled off depending upon your speed. When you're at your max speed, you'll be pulling off mainly the flip moves that involve, of course, as you've seen me spinning or doing an actually a complete flip, holding up or down to do some of the flips while holding left or right to do mostly the twists. Every time you're able to land, you'll get between 100 and 250 points. I think overdoing the same ones over and over again, it does lower the amount of points you get, but these are the best tricks to pull off to get the most amount of score. Just like with Skate or Die, I'm not an expert at maximizing my score. This is just the best way I have found in order to rack up a decent amount of points. You'll also get a big bonus for the amount of tricks you're actually able to complete within the two minutes, so the more tricks you do, the more bonus points you get. For completing a certain amount of tricks, I get a bonus score of 5,600 points for this round. It'll then show you the other competition and how you racked up against them, and since we're the only one competing, we'll end up finishing in first on all events, getting us an overall right now of 5. You'll get 5 points for every time you finish in first. Next up, though, the snowball fight level, and this is one of the weirdest events, because, well, you're throwing snowballs at kids. The whole purpose of this event is to try to defeat a certain number of kids within the time limit. You'll have the total amount of snowballs on the bottom, along with your score, how many kids you have left to hit, and the amount of time you have left. You'll throw the snowballs with the one button, and then hold in the B button and the direction in order to change what direction you're currently looking at, north, south, east, or west. On the right side, you'll notice a number next to each one of the letters representing the direction, and this is the amount of kids that are currently on screen at that one time throwing snowballs at you. You have to be really quick in order to complete different rounds, and if you're able to defeat the number of kids need it before the time runs out, you'll move on to the next level. 
There are a few other little bonus items laying along the ground, such as increasing your amount of snowballs you currently have. You'll also get a bonus for completing a round. And the next round will start up with more kids to defeat and usually less time. Now, the most I'm ever able to do is get to level number three, as the time and kid differential is just too great. Well, it is a pretty weird event overall, though the targeting works well enough as I usually don't run into too many issues while trying to aim at the kids. Now, you only have the 200 snowballs and that does not refill in between levels, so you'll have to find some extra ones laying on the ground and be careful when going around and just mashing the throw button. The snowball fight definitely gets hectic, with three or four of the kids on screen at once, and sometimes they just don't seem to stop coming at you. One cool thing though is you actually can hit two at one time if you get two of them in your crosshair with a single snowball. There's also a few other things that won't count towards your kid meter, but will give you some bonus points, such as the little snowmen, the yetis, or other skiers. After completing round number two, we'll move on to the third round here, and as you can see, I have to hit 100 kids in 65 seconds, which, as good as I try to be at this, I'm just unable to dwindle down that number fast enough in order to beat the count, but get as many points along the way as I can before that time does run out. Like I said, I'm not sure how many rounds exactly this can go on if three is the final one, and there may be some tricks to it that I'm unsure of in order to get that kid count to go down even quicker. After a pretty long and intense snowball fight, the time finally comes to an end, and I end up with a final score of 16,504. We move on to the third event of the game, the Skiing Downhill. Here, we start off at the top of the mountain with a very humorous drop-in from, I assume, a helicopter, crashing into the top of the snowy mountain before going onto the slopes itself. As far as points in this event goes, you'll be able to hit certain jumps in order to perform the tricks holding the A button, just like we did in the snowboard halfpipe. Using A and left, you'll be able to spin the skier, in which case if you're able to do two or more rotations, you'll pull in a decent amount of points, though it can be hard to get more than one rotation. Either way, you'll want to perform as many of the tricks as you can on each of the jumps in order to rack up points, as you'll also get bonus points for completing a certain amount of tricks once you have completed the course itself. You're also going to want to avoid accidentally falling off the course or running into the walls of the course, knocking yourself down and costing you precious time. As far as maneuverability of your character though, holding down will allow your character to move faster. Though because of this, you'll have to be careful that you don't hold it down when trying to make some of the tighter turns. For completing the course, you'll have your total score from the amount of tricks you pulled off, as well as a nice time bonus depending upon how fast you were able to complete the downhill. We then move on to the Acro Aerials, which is a three jump event. When you start off the event, you'll have to hit left and right while going downhill in order to get enough speed to get higher up into the air, which I always seem to have a bit of trouble with. Once in the air, you'll have to quickly perform tricks and then land safely, and the judges will give you a score based on how well you did. This is my worst event. 
I'm not very good at trying to get the speed on there, but I can usually pull off three to four tricks in the air on each jump, usually netting me between a 5 and a 7 rating from the judges. Usually I do a down and right, an up and left, and then do quick, small tricks using either just the left or right or up or down with the A button. The judges' total scores will rack up at the end of each of these, and you'll get your points based on your total number of scores, not your best overall jump. I failed this event a lot before I was able to finally get the four tricks in one single jump pulled off, and you can do a lot better if you can get the speed to work with you and get more speed on that hill prior to you getting into the air. But, I have three at least decent attempts here with the jumps, and we can move on to the next event, which you can see my total score being a 95.1. The fifth and final event is the Inner Tube Thrash. Now, here is one of the ones that you actually compete against a friend. Well, in this case, I'll be facing off against Lester, the computer player. Now, in this, your goal is to make it down the hill, picking up items, as well as trying to pop your opponent's inner tube. You'll press the B button to lunge forward a little bit in order to stab at them. You'll hold in the A button in order to move your character around in the inner tube itself so that you can actually face your opponent. You have to be facing your opponent in order to actually stab him. You'll notice on the bottom of the screen you have a meter, that's the amount of air you currently have in your inner tube. When that runs out, your opponent ends up getting points, or when he runs out, you get a good amount of points. And you can keep draining his air meter really easily by just consistently stabbing him over and over again. I find facing upwards and being just below him, I'll be able to pop the inner tube that he's in many, many times as we're working our way down. There are a few different weapons as you've noticed along the way and other items such as you can pick up the dart, fork, or pocket knife. There's also a few other things as well along the way that can actually hurt you such as bear traps so you'll want to avoid them. The course itself isn't overall too too long but you'll have a good opportunity to get plenty of stabs in on your opponent while slowly working your way down the hill. As far as which of the weapons works the best, I think the range is the same depending upon whichever one you have, but you get a bonus point for picking up new weapons, so it's worth it to keep picking up new ones each and every time you go down. Thankfully, even when you do run out of air, as you've noticed, you don't lose the race or anything like that, you just give some points to your opponent, but as long as you're racking up plenty of points yourself, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Trying to have a decent amount of speed, you'll want to avoid a lot of the little bumps and hills along the way, that way you maintain a good downward speed. And if you're able to finish the race ahead of your opponent, you'll get a bonus 1000 points. And then once again, it'll show us that we've completed every one of the events. We finished in first, of course, on all of them, since we were the only one competing, and get 9670 points for that event. You'll then go back outside of Rodney's Ski Shop, and you can go back to compete all the events, or check out your high scores, add new players, or whatever you would like. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.